At the beginning of lockdown, um, Jesus, I, I felt like he specifically asked me, who am I? Um, and I, I gave the very scripted answer, you are the son of God. And he was like, no, no, who am I? And it, I, my mind just blew because I was like, I have no idea who you are. I have no idea what you're about. Like, I, I just, you know, I know about this, but it's not imprinted on me almost. Um, and I think what, I, I think I kind of went on like um, a little trip with him to find out who he was. Um, and I really looked into like the Bible. I watched a TV show called The Chosen um, and I was reading um, some teaching um, from this guy called Brennan Manning who just talks about who Jesus is. Um, and I was absolutely astounded by what I found. Um, and what I found was just the most tender, compassionate man that I've ever encountered in my life. Like just from the people that he was with um, to the way he treated them and the way that he just handled himself and the way that he almost just, he just lived with his father the whole time. Um, and it really, it took me by surprise just how, how he lived this life of compassion um, and, and how he then said to me, because I went into lockdown with, you know, with, with quite a few things that I needed to work through. And he just said to me that he just loved me as I was and not as I should be. And, and almost that, you know, he just lifted off this weight of expectation. You know, that, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You know, I'm sure there's a Bible verse in that. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it really took me by storm. Um, so by worshipping him, I, it's not like I've sat down and um, sang a song to him. It's just that I've sat down and he's just kind of graced me with his presence. I've just been in silence and just, he's just come to me because that's all he wanted from me. He said he didn't want me to pray a certain way, to fast a certain way, to, to talk a certain way, that it was just that, that he just wanted me to know that he loved me. I think he's just told me that there's a real simplicity in it. Um, that he just says, love, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind and love thy neighbor. And I'm like, you know, it, it's not go and convert the, the local people in the park. It's not love people and then convert them. It's not tell them about their sin. It's just, it's just love them. Um, and I feel like, you know, that that, that is our mission. That it, it reciprocates that I can see that Jesus loves me as I am, not as I should be. And then I reciprocate that to my neighbor, to the person closest to me. And then again, that they reciprocate it. And it's almost like this knock on domino effect. And I feel like that's the mission that, that we are all called into. Um, and you know, with that, once, once you realize that the tenderness and the compassion of Jesus, the man of compassion, then that's, that's when the mission starts. Because then you realize that he loves every single person um, the way that he loves you. Um, and you know, it's not, it's not that, uh, I almost, I looked at myself and I found this almost pride in me and, and like a sense of privilege that I, Nathan, will go and share my love with the people that need it. And I, I just felt like God just kind of, he just dragged that out of me. He's like, that's, that's not what it's about. There's no difference between me and a homeless person. Absolutely not. The, the only difference is, is that Jesus has given me the slightest glimpse of himself and of his grace for me. That's the only difference. That's how he sees it. It's not that I'm any better and I have to bestow my love upon the people that need it. No, it's, it's that I'm, I am poor in spirit and so is the next person and then I have to reciprocate that. So that's the mission that I think that we're invited on to go in with this, this humble heart and to go into these places where Jesus is already with these broken people, with these people that need, that need new creations to not give up on them that that is the mission that he's calling us into. And I think that's where he already is and that's where he's already working. And maybe we just need to get to those places where he already is. That we mean what we say, that we are authentic in what we are doing and what we're saying. You know, um, there's always so much in the media about the church, about what is happening, what is going wrong and what is going right you know, what we stand up for and what we don't stand up for. Um, and I feel like going back to earlier points that when, once we capture that glimpse of Jesus, once he's like branded his love onto you, that, the, that you are loved as you are and not as you should be, then, then that's when people change and that's when the church changes. And that's the kind of people that the world needs and that the church needs. 
um, people that will stand up for these things because once you know I, I found with myself that as I've just had the tiniest glimpse at him that there's, there's just like strength and character developing that there is kindness and compassion and patience and all these different things just developing um, and those are you know for so long I thought that that, that culture says that you know I have to be confident or I have to be funny or I have to buy into all these different things and actually people people don't want that that's what society tells us but it's not true that what people actually want is someone that cares for them someone that will tell them the truth that someone that they can rely on someone that that is all of the fruits of the spirit that is what is lacking um, and I think that's where God is taking the church now that he wants to 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 get these new creations and these people that have genuine love for other people that don't do it because they should or because it is expected or out of obligation because that is not true love, that is not genuine. I feel like he wants to, to get these people together that actually do love people as Jesus did and had compassion. In 1 Corinthians 13, you know, it's like, if you've ever been to a wedding, you know that it's the most famous like love passage in the Bible. But the most staggering bit is at the beginning where it says like, if you do all these things, but you do not do it out of love, then you are nothing. You know, you can die of martyrdom, you can, you can prophesy, you can fast, you can do all them things, but if you don't do it out of love, out of this genuine love that Jesus has, then it's, it's for nothing. So I think I'd, I'd just like to see now, um, it just move forward and us be at the forefront, you know, forefront of like, I don't want to use the word revival, but revival. Um, <laughs> because like, you know, it's, it's, it's talked about so much and I feel like it's prophesied all the time about this revival that's coming in. I'm like, the revival will start with the people looking at Jesus. That is what it is, that, that is what will happen. And, you know, I, I do believe that, you know, the outpouring of the spirit is part of the revival and it will look a certain way. But I just, I look at the state of the world at the minute and I'm like, a revival would be, Black Lives Matter. A revival would be other social things coming into the world now and it's starting from the church. You know, because there are, there are like different spectrums that we go on that we either tell, we either try and control people with truth or we um, just don't get involved in truth at all. And hopefully, you know, you want to land somewhere it's like the church is going in this direction that we feel that, that Jesus is calling us to about this, this inequality and this issue. And we would like society to to join with us and you know I, I feel like the church is sometimes just a bit behind on these and kind of jumps on the bandwagon and it's like we should be at the forefront at starting these trends and the, all these different things um, but I think I think the the thing that I'd love to see most happen in the Baptist church is just that we accept everybody um, that you know there are there are pastoral issues at times yeah but that that we just don't turn people away that no matter if they don't fit our mold or they don't resonate with us, that we still have that same compassion for them. Um, and I think that's what the heart of God is. And I think that's what Jesus did. Um, and that was why it, that's what got him killed. <laughs> because it was so extravagant. It was not normal.